How the Giraffe Got Its Long Neck Before Alonso the Giraffe was born, you may not believe it, but all giraffes had small, short necks. They didn't look like giraffes at all because also they had very big heads and tiny little legs. When he was six months old, Alonso's parents took him for a walk across a huge field called a prairie. It was where a lot of other animals lived, like lions, buffalo and zebras. <laughs> Suddenly, Alonso started to laugh. His parents looked around. Nothing funny was happening, and yet Alonso was giggling his boots off. You will have to carry him, said Alonso's mother to his father. I'm getting fed up picking up his boots. Why are you laughing? Alonso's father still could not see anything funny. I can't help it, snorted Alonso. Every time I take a pace forward, the grass tickles my tummy and makes me laugh. Alonso's father had short legs as well, but the grass didn't tickle his tummy and make him laugh, and he didn't know of any other giraffes that squealed with mirth every time they went for a walk. I think we have a very strange son. Alonso's mother was watching him, holding his head up very high as if he was frightened to let it near the ground. It's the mushrooms, said Alonso's father. He hates the smell of them, so he's trying to avoid sniffing near them. Alonso was a very nosy giraffe. He liked to stretch his neck over walls to see what was going on in other animals' gardens. In fact, what with stretching away from mushrooms and peeping over walls, Alonso, by the age of two, had stretched his neck by almost a metre. It was all very well for Alonso to stretch his neck like that, but with his big head and short little legs, something terrible happened. Imagine Alonso walking across a big open field, then, without warning, biff, bash, bosh! A huge wind hit poor Alonso with a long neck, big head and little legs, right in the middle of his tummy. Rumble, 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 tumble. Alonso, being so top-heavy, goes flying. That's pretty bad, but things get worse. As he gets older and his top gets heavier, and his legs get shorter. It only takes someone to sneeze in his direction to send Alonso tumbling over and over into the next field. And when the wind was really strong, Alonso had to be tied to a tree by his mummy and daddy to stop them losing him altogether. The jungle doctor took one look at Alonso and prescribed the strongest leg medicine he had. And within a few days, Alonso's little legs began to get longer and longer and longer. Terrific, cried Alonso. The grass isn't tickling my tummy any more. After a few weeks, his legs had grown so long, Alonso's daddy cried stop, but the jungle doctor could not do anything. We'll stop the medicine, but it's so strong his legs will carry on growing for a bit, cried the doctor. So the leg medicine was stopped, but for the next two weeks, Alonso continued to grow, getting taller and taller and taller, until he was the tallest giraffe in the family. So tall, in fact, he could even see over the tops of trees. Until one morning, when he woke, Alonso stretched his long legs and long neck, stood up and yawned, and then something very strange happened. Alonso toppled forwards, right onto his nose. The jungle doctor saw the problem immediately. With your long, thin legs and your very tall neck and your great big head, you have become top-heavy. So the doctor gave Alonso some small head medicine. This was to make Alonso's head smaller so he would not fall forwards when he stood up. The medicine worked a treat and Alonso's head began to shrink. When it was in the size that stopped him toppling over, the doctor gave him some stop the small head medicine. But there was a surprise for Alonso. When he looked in the mirror, beside his ears, two little horns had poked themselves up at the top of his head. Didn't expect that. The doctor was astonished. There was nothing in the medicine that mentioned the horns. Alonso looked in the mirror again. The little horns were quite pretty. No problem, said the doctor. We'll soon have those off. No. Alonso looked in the mirror again. 
They make me look quite handsome. I shall keep them. Alonso was now by far the tallest and most elegant creature in the family, and all the other girl giraffes in the jungle were falling in love with him. But one girl giraffe was cleverer than the rest. Her name was Ariel, and she knew to get Alonso's interest she would have to make herself much more attractive than all the other girl giraffes. She knew she was very pretty in a small way, and if she wanted to marry Alonso, she'd have to be pretty in a very big way. The jungle doctor was very thoughtful. If Ariel became the same size as Alonso, it would make giraffes much taller and graceful than the podgy little giraffes everyone knew. So he agreed to give Ariel the medicine he had given Alonso. Wow! Bing! Bang! Boo! Six months later, a beautiful, tall, elegant, stylish, grateful, chic giraffe fluttered her eyelashes at Alonso. Alonso's heart leapt. It was instant love, and Ariel and Alonso were married in the jungle church within weeks. Of course, their children were tall and elegant, perhaps even a little taller than their parents. They enjoyed a wonderful life. They had the sweetest leaves to eat from the top of trees. They had the best view of all the animals, and none of them had to suffer from the smells of the earth that Alonso hated. And... As each generation of giraffes were born, they grew a little taller until we have the giraffes you see in Africa today. Alonso died many, many years ago, but now every time you see the long neck and tall legs of a giraffe, just think, it might never have happened had it not been for Alonso, who hated having his tummy tickled by the African grass and who had been a very, very nosy giraffe who hated the smell of mushrooms.